Hi, this is Andrew for Geek News Central, and on a very wet and windy Halloween morning, we have the Roku Stream Bar. This is new to the UK. If you recall, we currently have the Roku Express, the Roku Premier, and the Roku Streaming Stick Plus, and this brings a fourth device to the Roku lineup over here. As you can tell, this isn't quite just one of those small streaming uh, units that you might just be able to hide behind the TV. This is a what is sometimes called a soundbar, so it provides a much richer uh, audio experience. Um, this the unit here we'll see in more detail has a number of speakers in there, and it's really intended to 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 kind of I think I mean I think we all know that the quality of the speakers in many of the flat screen TVs aren't great. So instead of having to fork out for a you know, a 5.1 surround sound system with speakers all around the room, we can get a great deal of that experience using these, these sound bars. As you'd expect, it, it covers all the bases in terms of the picture quality. Uh, you've got uh, support for 4K TVs up to HDR10. And if you have anything less, you'll still be taken care of. It has uh, Dolby Audio, and you can also connect uh, Bluetooth to it. And for those of us who have perhaps some kind of video library, you'll be keen to hear that it has a USB port on the back. And although I haven't tried it out yet, it looks like you'll be able to plug in a memory stick or USB hard drive and access your videos uh, and films that way. That's something that's been missing from the UK range for a little while. So it's great to see that come back. The, in terms of price, it is $129.99. So it's a little bit more expensive than the Streaming Stick Plus, which is the previous kind of high-end model. Uh, but hopefully the additional features of the high-end audio will make it worthwhile. Um, I should make it clear that this unit was provided for review by Roku. I didn't buy it myself. Um, but I think we'll, we'll take a look, we'll, we'll get it unboxed and we'll take a look at it in more detail. Uh, and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we're back with the uh, Roku Stream Bar. So we're gonna get this unboxed and then we'll get it hooked up to the TV and uh, hopefully experience some premium audio, as they say. So you can kind of see the stream bar here. Um, as it shows you around the back, you can kind of see it here without its grill on, and you can kind of see the additional speakers. Um, you've got your traditional Roku remote, and there's a few other bits and pieces in the box, but let's, uh, let's just take a look and see what's inside. Oh, okay, a few bits of blurb. Looks like here's the soundbar itself. Let's get this unwrapped. Okay, so there's the unit there. I think that's going to look quite well underneath the TV. And then let's see what else is inside the box. I imagine it's going to be mostly cables and power supplies and things like that. Okay, so hopefully you can kind of see all of that. Uh, we've got the, the power supply here. We've got the traditional Roku remote control. Uh, it's just uh, pretty much as we'd expect. And as ever, they let you have the batteries. Power leads, so it looks like it comes with both a, I feel like a, a GB or a UK power lead, plus a continental one, which we won't need. And then we've got a range of connections or cables for connections here. So we've got a, um, a digital audio cable, which is great because what that means is that we will be able to hopefully output the sound from the TV uh, into the Roku. So we're not restricted to using the soundbar's capabilities for programs that come through the streaming service. And then we've also got a HDMI cable which is great, it's always nice to have that, you're not having to run out and, and buy another cable. Okay, so what I'll do is, well, I'll get this all, well, actually, sorry, before we do that and get it connected up, let's have a look around the back. Um, so we've also, it looks like we've got some mounts here if we need to screw this to anything. Uh, they look like the standard kind of camera mounts. And uh, we've got the power connection. There's your digital input for audio, HDMI, the USB port that I kind of talked about in the introduction and then it looks like there's a, a reset button so tell you what i will get this all connected up i don't think anybody needs any help getting connected if you're a geek it all looks pretty straightforward 
Uh, these will go to the TV, that will go to the power socket, and hopefully very quickly we'll get some half decent audio out of this. Okay, back in a second. Okay, so uh, after a few minutes I've managed to get the Roku stream bar all set up, very straightforward. As I said, plug in the power, plug in the HDMI cable, and uh, looking through the instructions I was reminded that not all HDMI sockets are the same. If you do have one that's labelled ARC, ARC, that's Audio Return Channel, it means that you can get audio from the TV to the stream bar. So as if you are watching something else, say on Sky, uh, you can get the audio from that channel kind of to be routed through to the, uh, the stream bar. So if you do have that feature on your TV, do try using it. It'll make your life uh, a lot easier. The other thing I spotted is that the new Roku remote is a wee bit different. Uh, I don't know if it'll, I can get this to come into focus, but you'll kind of see that there's three buttons on the side. Uh, there's a new mute button if you've had one of the previous generation uh, controllers from the stream bar. I know it's, it's not quite in focus, but uh, you get the idea. You should be able to just see it. So we've been through the setup process. It's all very straightforward. Uh, connected the stream bar to the Wi-Fi network. Uh, went online to activate the device through the Roku website. And then there's a, a little bit where my TV, unfortunately, is, is so old it doesn't have the ARC. So it just warns you that you haven't connected it up correctly, uh, you know, confirms that you don't have an ARC, and then reminds you to use the, the digital optical cable. So it's all very well done, it, you know, kind of leads you down the garden path. So right now it's just updating all my channels and things like that and loading them onto the, uh, the stream bar. I'll not bore you with this further. Okay, so I've had a quick run through the features of the stream bar, and so far I've been pretty impressed. Obviously it is a Roku streaming device at its heart, and it works exactly as you'd expect a Roku in terms of you've got your channels and all that kind of stuff, and everything seems to work fine. But the thing where I've been really impressed so far is that it has managed to successfully take over the, if you like, the sound of the TV uh, across the board, not just when you're looking at the Roku channels. If I'm looking at Sky, the Sky audio comes through the, the stream bar. If I'm looking at just the ordinary TV, the sound comes through the stream bar. And that's great because one of the issues is always uh, about the volume and turning the volume on the TV down whilst you turn the surround sound up. Uh, it, it's all handled automatically and it doesn't matter what uh, what remote you use. You can use the Roku remote remote, and the volume goes down. You can use the TV remote and the volume goes up and down. You can use the Sky remote and the volume goes up and down. Uh, it's really very clever. So from that point of view, very impressed. Okay, well look, I'm going to use this for maybe for another week or two, and then I'll come back for a final summary at the very end. Hi, it's Andrew for Geek News Central, and we're back with the Roku stream bar after about two weeks of testing in the family room. Now overall, I've been quite impressed with the, the stream bar. It was easy to set up and it's easy to use. And some of the problems that I was expecting, such as how do you control the TV, how do you control the Roku, they've taken care of those and we'll, we'll have a look at those in just a minute. Here's the stream bar, here's the screen. It pretty much works as an ordinary Roku. It has all the features you'd expect from a Roku. You know, you've got your, your uh, 4K, you've got your HDR, all those kinds of things. But on top of that, you do have this, this small compact soundbar, um, which really does enhance the, the sound from you know, an otherwise flat screen TV, which really doesn't have the depth that you need to produce high quality sound. In terms of the sound, I've actually found it most noticeable, the, the improvement whilst playing things like video games. Um, and yes, there's definitely improvements whilst you're watching TV, when you're watching films. Uh, one of my particular pet hates is the kind of jingle that uh, accompanies the BBC's news round uh, program, that's the, their news program for children, and it sounds really, really bad on, on some of the cheaper TVs, or certainly on our TV, especially in the kitchen. Uh, but this really brings a much uh, greater richness and depth to the, the audio production. Is it as good as a 5.1 AV surround system? No, it's not. But it only costs a quarter of the price, or probably even a smaller fraction than that. Uh, it, it genuinely does make uh, listening to things like Spotify on your TV uh, a bit more, very much more enjoyable than it would be uh, otherwise. You know, uh, I don't think I've ever listened to Spotify for any length of time 
on my TV just because the sound is so bad. But, but with the stream bar, it definitely makes it, uh, makes it possible. It does have quite a good rich sound. I do like the sound that it produces. Uh, and it's, and I say it's a, a million miles better than the, than the, the TV speakers. In terms of features, let me just get the remote controls. I mean, one of the issues that I was a bit concerned about is that yes, you can you can use the remote here to adjust the volume whilst you're um, whilst you're in the Roku features, and you can see it going up and down up there. But you can also use the volume control of the uh, TV to do the same thing. Now, there's a bit of you can kind of see it flicking in here, and that's the TV. But it does successfully hand it off to the Roku soundbar to increase or decrease the volume. And that was one thing that I was really worried about when I first got the. Uh, this, this, the stream bar was how is that actually all going to work. Now my TV is quite an old TV. If again, if you remember from the setup, the Roku uses the HDMI ARC arc to try and control the TV and the uh, if you like the sound signals through a single cable. Now my TV doesn't have that feature, so whilst I still have the HDMI cable, I also have a digital audio cable to connect the sound bar to the TV. Um, and, and that seems to be working fine. Now, my wife did report a couple of times where when she turned on the TV or when she turned on Sky, um, she wasn't able to get the sound coming through the stream bar immediately. Uh, and what we usually found is that we'd have to kind of wake it by perhaps pressing some of the, the audio buttons on the side. But after that, it took over and it automatically makes sure that the TV speakers are turned off when the, the uh, stream bars uh, connected up. You don't need to worry about uh, you know, muting the, the TV sound, just you just use the, the stream bar. And I have to say, I, I, that was my biggest concern, and it works really well. There are some specific features for the stream bar, which you wouldn't otherwise see in the, um, in the, in the Roku. Sorry, my cat has just come in. Shh, you behave. So one of the things you'll notice here is we've got uh, a Bluetooth channel, as it were and that allows you to connect Bluetooth devices, obviously, to the stream bar, so you can get the benefit of the audio from that um, through, the, through the stream bar. Um, also in settings, there is a, a kind of section on audio where you can adjust, uh, you can adjust the, the things like the bass and the speech, you can uh, uh, change the clarity and things like that for some of those terrible films where you can hardly hear, hear a word that the people are saying. So there's, there's an additional benefit there. But other than that, it's pretty much as you'd expect from your Roku. You've got your, all your, your usual features. If you haven't used the, uh, the, if you like the voice search feature and the voice function on this, it's pretty good. You just press the uh, microphone button and say what you want. Launch BBC iPlayer. And there you go, it starts up, the BBC's iPlayer. So it's quite a nice feature if you, instead of you having to faff around and use the cursor to go backwards and forwards. You can basically just tell it what you want. Home. So that's great. Um, I mean, I say, just like any Roku, you've got all your standard channels for the UK, iPlayer, ITV, Hub, uh, 4OD, or 4 as it's called, My5, Netflix, Prime, Apple, um, there's Disney, Spotify. Oops. You've got the, uh, you've got the Roku channel, um, Oh, and just whilst we're on the topic of this, we've got the Roku Media Player here. One of the benefits of this particular Roku over any of the other Rokus on the UK market at the moment is that it does have a USB port on the back. I've put a little memory stick in there, and it does mean that you can play uh, any of your media media from that uh, USB thumb drive. Um, let's just go through that just very briefly. Yep, so if I go to video, I could choose my external thumb drive. I do have a, a NAS as well, but I can go into the thumb drive and then it'll, uh, if I go into my videos, I think uh, my daughter has all her Harry Potter in here for quick access. So that's a really handy feature and it's definitely worth looking at if you have a, a media collection of your, of your own. With everything. Oh, the one thing I should also mention is that there is a complimentary uh, Roku app, which actually allows you to control the uh, Roku from your phone. So you can probably see that it actually, as I use the app, it, uh, it responds to my touches here. Um, one of the other benefits is you can have private, uh, if you like, like private listening through the app. 
in that uh, it'll route the, the sound and the audio through to perhaps headphones that you're wearing that connect through the, uh, the phone, which can be, can be handy if you're trying to watch something without disturbing other people. Okay, before we wrap up, I just wanted to show the stream bar working with the TV viewing, if you like, ordinary TV channels. Really what we've looked at so far has been the Roku working as a Roku. So I'm just going to flick it over to BBC very briefly because I don't want any strikes on my YouTube channel. But we'll see that we'll be able to record the adjust the volume with both the Roku remote and the TV remote. So this is uh, BBC One, when you play, and you can see that if I use the Roku buttons, you can see the volume goes down. And if I use the TV remote, I can also make the volume go back up again. So we'll just get back to where we were before, just back on the, the Roku. Oops. There we go. So as so as I said, that was also one of my concerns, but it, it does work really seamlessly. Okay, before we finally wrap up, I thought I'd just remind people what the Roku stream bar actually looks like. I've been reviewing some of the earlier footage and you really can't see very much of it because everything's black. So here's the stream bar, kind of smooth on top, fabric around the outside covering the four speakers that are within the stream bar. You've got the little Roku LED, uh, sorry, logo and a small LED there. It goes red when it's turned off. Around the back, you've got all the connections and you've got a couple of uh, screw mounts if you need to attach it to the wall or anything. So really that's it. This is the Roku Stream Bar. It's 130 pounds. It has all the features that you'd expect of a high-end media streamer. You've got your 4K, you've got your HDR, and you've got the much improved audio over a flat screen TV. So I'd thoroughly recommend it. If you're looking for something just to, to perhaps lift your TV without spending an absolute fortune, um, I think it's a, it's a great purchase. So this is Andrew. Oh, I should just say, if you want any more information, it's www.roku.com. And uh, the SaaS stream bars are available from all major retailers, as they say. So thanks very much. This is Andrew for Geek News Central.